Hey everyone, PBNJ here. I'm Brian. I'm John, and this is our very first podcast. So basically, me, Brian, and our uh, buddy Patrick, who you've probably seen in our videos, uh, talk about movies, comic books, video games, uh, all the time. And we decided that, hey, it would be fun to put on a podcast, because I'm sure we talk about the same things you guys all like to listen to. Um, today, uh, we decided to do a review of Alien Covenant, because I saw it yesterday. And while it's fresh on my mind, we decided to put something together. And uh, I don't think Brian has seen it, right, Brian? No, I have not. Um, but I have watched Prometheus, so... Yeah, so Brian's kind of. Yeah, try not to give any spoilers. Yeah, I try to keep it. I try to keep it spoiler free. Um, but you know, Brian wanted to talk about it, so we thought let's just throw this together. We'll talk about the movie, and then uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about horror movies in general. As it's, I'm a big horror movie buff. I've watched horror movies my whole life, so um, I thought it'd be cool to just talk about that uh, in general. Okay, so. Um, let's kind of recap for those who have watched Prometheus. The, the movie ends where Shaw leaves the planet and David, he's, you know, only his head remains and he's just floating off. So the movie ends there. So how, how does this new alien movie, like, where does it pick up from there? So the movie, uh, without again, without getting into spoilers, it picks up about 10 years after Prometheus. Um, there's a new crew aboard the Covenant. Um, they're actually a colony uh because you know in every movie ever the future earth is screwed and we have to colonize other planets so they're on a, uh, on a mission to uh recolonize a new planet or colonize a new planet um there's an accident aboard the ship everyone has to wake up a little early well the crew wakes up a little early and they hear a distress call which uh is the prometheus so they decide to detour and check out uh, where that signal's from, and on this, and they when they land on this planet, they meet David. Um, I will leave it there because I don't want to get too too spoilery. Um, I, unless you think that's a good spot, Brian, or you want to know a little bit more. Well, I'm curious to know: did they go back to the planet where the Prometheus left off, or is this a new planet? No, no, brand new planet, totally new planet. Um, if you remember the end of Prometheus, uh, David and Shaw are heading back to one of the engineer planets. I don't don't know if it's a, the home planet or just they're a colony planet for them. Uh, but it's totally new. It's not. It's a new planet that wasn't in Prometheus or in the, any other uh, Alien movies. Yeah, um, from the trailers that I saw, they pretty much landed in a planet that was that looked very similar to Earth, right? They have those grass and a waterfall. Yeah, um, yeah, and that's, so that's like uh, that when they when they find the distress call and they check out the planet, everything comes back as perfect um, for possible colonization, and that's one of the reasons why they want to check it out. They're like, hey, this planet's a lot closer, and it actually looks like it might be a good fit. Let's check it out. And then they break off course. Um, one of uh, many bad decisions that are made in all these horror movies. Okay, so yeah, I mean, it sounds pretty cool. Um, so in Prometheus, that movie looked, looked more like a um, like a sci-fi movie. There's a lot of philosophy in there. Um, what about this one? Is this more of the same, or is it different? There, uh, there, there is. There's a lot of lot of philosophical discussions uh, about you know creation. Uh, pretty much the same thing as Prometheus, and you know David wondering uh, about humans' fascination with find out who created them. Um, and why it's such a big deal to him as he knows you created him he just doesn't care um, a lot of stuff like that uh, this movie though is a lot darker uh, a lot more violent a lot more scarier than Prometheus is so um, if you guys are going in thinking it's going to be a you know, just cool sci-fi flick like Prometheus was um, you're, there are some good scares in here okay sounds cool so it kind of takes a step back into the original Alien movies then. Yeah, yeah, more Alien style, which is cool. Um, you know, since it's really Scott, he did the first, since he directed directed the first one, it's, he kind of went back to the uh, his old bread and butter of actual scare, scary horror stuff. Okay. So um, to be honest, I didn't follow the entire Alien series. I mean, I was too young to watch the first one, and it just 
<clears throat> never had a chance to watch it. And and then by the time I was like old enough to to watch these movies, they just started getting dumber and dumber. They started <laughs> have Alien versus Predator and yeah. all these other. Yeah. Uh, so Alien Three and Alien Four are really bad. They're just bad movies. Uh, Alien vs. Predator, uh, they're also crap, but they actually take place in their own universe. They're not they're not um, affiliated with um, the Alien movies or the Predator movies uh, as well. They're they're their own little thing. Um, so in the in the timeline of this movie, it's is a prequel to the Alien and Aliens, uh, Alien Three and Alien Resurrection. Um, so don't if you haven't seen Alien Three and Alien Four, don't worry about it. They're just not good movies. Um, stick to Alien and Aliens. Uh, but yeah, this was actually more... This actually... actually and it actually feels more like the Alien movie than uh, something like Resurrection, which was just super cheesy and um, really campy and just, just dumb. Okay, cool. So it sounds like, uh, it's a, like if you watch Prometheus, then there is something there for you for this movie. So what, what would you give us as a review? Like, what do you think? All right. Well, a quick review. Um, yeah, definitely. If you like Prometheus, you'll like you'll like this one. Um, uh, Michael Fassbender uh, does a great job. Again, uh, he actually probably transforms David into you know one of the top villains I've seen recently. Um, the acting, the acting all the way all the way across was great, just like Prometheus. Um, the visually looks great, like Prometheus. Um, the negative part of it is is if you if you didn't like Prometheus. The reasoning was probably because of the story. Uh, they bring up a lot of questions: uh, who the engineers were, why do they create us, why do they get mad at us, why do they want to kill us. And they brought up all these questions five years ago. Um, those questions are—they're not answered in this movie either. They're actually not addressed at all. So the story is a little light in some areas. Um, that was probably my negative on it was. I wanted to really see that stuff, and it just doesn't get addressed as all at all. Uh, the story and the story overall is just—it's not the greatest. You know, it's colonists land on planet. Oh, oh crap! There's aliens. So that was that would be my knock on it, the negative. Um, so definitely, if you had that problem with the first Prometheus, you're gonna have that problem again. Uh, the, but the negative stuff out the way, it is it, it's it's really cool. I liked it a lot. Um, to see the the aliens again, the the, the real aliens um, was great. They're scary, uh, and that's another strong part of this movie that it is scary. So if you, you know if you're thinking you're just gonna be in there and having seen some cool stuff and it's all good, uh, now you're gonna, you're gonna get freaked out. Uh, there's two or three really really big scary scenes that are, are really cool. Um, the visuals again. Uh, Ridley Scott and his and his cinematographer, I forget his name, but they worked together over the years. They just know how to shoot great looking movies. Uh, the effects are super, super high, super top notch. Probably, the, you know, some of the best effects I've seen this year. And even Prometheus from five years ago, if you put that on now, uh, it looks great. It looks like it was made, you know, just the other day. Um, so same thing again with this one. It's, it's crazy. The action scenes are crazy. It looks crazy. Um, super exciting. Um, and you know the new cast the new cast is great um, I, I don't know if it holds up to the original cast of Prometheus I mean you had Idris Elba Charlie Theron uh, Guy Pierce. you know they did they're great their characters really stood out these these actors did a great job the characters probably aren't as memorable as the the first Prometheus crew uh, but still still a good job so overall yeah I don't know yeah I don't know about like Danny McBride like when I saw him like I I immediately think of all the comedic stuff. That right, right, him. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. Like, what, what's he doing in this movie? But he, he does good. He does a good job. Um, he plays his role well, and uh, I was I was really afraid for uh, that he would start just cracking into some jokes. You know, you're waiting for him to crack some jokes, and he doesn't. He 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 does it well. So um, overall, I liked it. Uh, good movie. Uh, check it out if you, you can check it out on the big screen. Do so because that's where it's really really worth it. I saw I saw Prometheus in 3D and that was that looked great. I didn't get a chance to see this one in 3D, but uh, just the way it's filmed, I know it looked good. Uh, so I, I give it I give it a good recommendation. Go check it out. Uh, any horror fan who wants to see a great great horror movie, uh, go check it out for sure. 
Okay, cool. All right, so um, yeah, so the um, weekend opening weekend box office numbers came in for the movie. It came in at about like thirty six million. Yeah, yesterday. yeah, kind of disappointing. Uh, yeah, um, I think they were targeting about in the 40, 40 million range, and yeah, didn't um, didn't hit it. Yeah, so and the movie cost about what a hundred million to make or so. Uh, just under, yeah. It was like it was like ninety five, ninety seven. So it's just under a hundred million. Right. Okay. So yeah, that doesn't include uh, advertising right. and all that. Stuff. Yeah. So, what, what do you think about their direction? I mean, where where do they go from here? Well, um, I know Ridley Scott. Uh, he has a few more planned already. He's a, he said before that he has another movie coming up. I'm not sure what it's about. I don't remember. Uh, but he really wanted to get the sequel to this this movie uh, cranking and going uh, spring 2018. Um, I think he even gave a month, like March or something like that. So he really, he has one ready to go. It sounds like they run ready to go. If the movie doesn't perform well, you know, will they, will they pump the brakes on it? Maybe. Uh, we'll have to wait and see what the final t- uh, tally is. And right now it's not looking looking too great which is weird it started off great thursday and friday opened up huge so they were expecting a big weekend and it just kind of fell off but not really sure why and then with um pirates opening on friday that's not good either uh they kind of sandwiched this movie in between you know, two big ones and guardians of the galaxy and then and then pirates so i don't know if that was a miscalculation on, on their on their part or they thought to, because it's a different movie it's a rated r horror movie um that'll be okay um I hope so. I hope they. I hope they keep making them. I hope the next one comes out because this movie really finishes really strong. Oh, that's another part I forgot to mention. The third act in this movie is really really strong. It finishes on a super high note. Uh, it kind of leaves you wanting, uh, wanting to see more. And I definitely want to see more. Uh, so I'm I'm hoping that that it finishes you know strong, uh, and they don't you know Fox doesn't get uh, scared off by the low weekend and they make at least one more. I I, I was I'm definitely I, I would say at least one more. Uh, coming I'm feeling pretty confident about that yeah I, I hope they at least make one more just to wrap up all the answers it, yeah. it would be unfortunate to leave it open ended you know, right they right end it, you know, answering some of the questions and, and they're big questions too it's not like something small like hey what happened to that guy's dog like no nothing like these are huge important questions that need to be answered and then there's even more in this movie that are brought up that I don't want to I don't want to talk about too much if you haven't seen it uh, but even there's still some more questions that need to be answered. So uh, yeah, I really hope that the series just isn't left hanging. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. I mean, um, I'm guessing they decided to release this weekend to have a one week head start before Memorial Day. Um, and and these type of movies, they don't, they generally don't do well overseas, right? It's more like a U.S. type movie. So um, yeah, hopefully we'll we'll see how it does in the next few weeks, and and hope they make another sequel. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I mean, definitely want to see more. Yeah, I hope it does well. I mean, from what you're telling me, it's more like a horror movie. Um, maybe it will. It'll take some time for it to pick up um, to let people know. You know, people who watched it to tell other people that this is more of a horror movie. Yeah, than word, word of mouth. Yeah, um, with movies like Get Out and Split, you know, maybe um, it'll, it'll be able to make make a good comeback at the box office especially since get out made tons of money yeah get out uh, get out crushed it yeah um yeah i mean uh, uh you're hoping the, the, the horror movie scene recently uh, especially in particularly in hollywood has, has gone a lot stronger lately uh, people seem more open to, to go and see these movies over and over again uh get out was a great example that movie just crushed it, it made like, over 100 million dollars on like a 12 million dollar budget or something dumb um split the same thing it's just uh, and it was interesting with Split was out the M Night Shyamalan movie. Who M Night has been, you know, really, really just hit and miss. And once that movie came out and the word of mouth on that got out, it it picked up and ended up doing really well. Uh, the good thing, yeah, the good thing with Hollywood, you know, they they seem to be focusing on the scares again, which is which is uh, really cool. Uh, for a while there, it got got there was a big downturn. I don't know if you remember, like. After I would say 2004 and five, after Saw came out, um, a lot of those movies got more into like torture porn style. You probably saw at least a lot of previews about those type of movies, right? Well, what's the example? 
like what type of movie would you would be categorized as uh that? pretty much any of the movie any of those movies where it was just it just seemed to be them make uh trying to make the movies as like gory as possible right people getting chopped up tortured uh blood everywhere you know those those movies aren't they're not fun to watch you know what i mean mm-hmm. You go to a scary movie, you go in with a bunch of friends, um, you, you, you go and you get scared, and afterwards, everyone's just laughing about it, right? Oh, that was scary, that was scary, we had such a good time, but those torture porn movies, you're sitting there, and it was a struggle just to get through them. <laughs> um, there's like, you know, like, in the Saw movies got really, I, I would say, I think Saw 2 was just, like, they took it to just a, the next level, or at, at some points in the movie, you're like, I don't even want, I don't even want to watch this anymore. Um yeah, after after a point, it becomes comedic, right? I mean, yeah, these movies yeah. Where I sit in the theater and I watch, and towards the end, everyone just start they just start laughing. Um, like Final Destination, like the first few kills, it was kind of like ill, you know, it's kind of like a shock. But after a while, I guess it's because they they have so many of them back to back, it just becomes comedic and it kind of takes away from the the horror of the movie. Yeah, I guess the point there is no horror. You're just like, okay, yeah. what's what's next? What are they gonna do next? Right. Um, so yeah, after, I mean, not, not to talk bad on Saw, the first Saw was really good, you know, with that big twist at the end. Um, uh, but then everyone tried to jump on that, you know, which is what Hollywood does, it's, you know, let's make the next Saw movie, let's make the next Saw movie. And then, uh, it, you know, movies that come out like Hostile and, uh, High Tension, uh, super, super graphic, super gory. Um, now I'm not saying those, the first Hostile is pretty good and then, but two and three are just ridiculous. Um. So you had you had those movies come out. A lot of people were just like, you know, I don't, I don't want to watch this stuff anymore, and they stopped, you know, turning out to those. And then in 2009, we had um, Paranormal Activity came out, which was a huge hit. And that first one's the same thing. The first one's good, but again, with the copycat style, everyone said was like, well, we got to make the next Paranormal Activity. And found footage became, you probably remember that. Found footage became all the rage. It was all kinds of just found footage movies. Well, uh, like, uh, well. Before Paranormal Activity, there were like Blair Witch, right? I mean, that was kind of one of them. Yeah, yeah, Blair Witch came out, which came out I think in '99. Uh, that was actually really good. And back, what was cool back then is that people thought it was real. Right. You know, people were just for the longest time, oh, it was a real movie, it was a real movie. Uh, and then you had the same thing. You had people, you had a lot of found footage movies coming out after that, and kind of killed it. Um, and again, there were some some good uh, found footage style. Uh, Quarantine in 2008 was pretty good. Um, but you know, once the paranormal activity franchise got going, it was one every single year, every Halloween, there was a paranormal activity that got old really fast. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I watched, uh, it was either the third or fourth one. And I was like, okay, I, these are all the same. And I just stopped caring. So horror movies just kind of just took a, just a, you know, just a real downturn. People just, you know, there was a horror movie that came out. I was like, ah, I don't care. I don't want to see it. And a lot of them were bad. Uh, but I'm, I'm talking mostly Hollywood horror. There was always really good underground stuff. Uh, you had guys, you had directors like uh, Lucky McKee and, and Ty West who were putting out really good stuff. Uh, bad part is it's really hard to find that stuff. Uh, you had to, it, you know, I, I didn't hear about them. I just, just through internet searches and forums and word of mouth. And then you check out, check out House of the Devil. It's on Netflix right now. Okay, cool. I check it out. Man, this is a good, you know, this is a really good movie. It was in the theaters, but I don't even know if it was in the theaters. Um, but I would I would say everything kind of changed um, when Insidious came out. It was uh, low budget, PG thirteen, so it wasn't super gory or anything, but it was legitimately scary. Um, and I get I think people have realized, hey, you know, you make a scary movie, and again, it was a huge hit, hundred hundred million dollars off of nothing budget. Um, and I think people realize if you make these movies scary, people want to. That's what they want to see. That's where you, that's where the fun is. Um, so after Insidious, you had Conjuring come out, and the Conjuring was great. And then Insidious two and three, um, Conjuring two came out uh, last year, I think. It was awesome. And you had uh, Annabelle, um, stuff like that. And then uh, recently, um, uh, you had movies like The Witch and Baba Duke, uh, It Follows, movies that were kind of underground indie style, but really got a lot of traction because they're really really good, and they got big pushes in uh in the theater or or just marketed really well like get out was marketed really well it was all over the place you couldn't get away from it right um so it's actually really cool to see a, a big you know the upswing of really really good horror movies in hollywood really backing them 
uh, it kind of same thing kind of happened in the '90s, where there was just nothing. There was there's just junk after the '80s came out, and they had it was just just slasher movies. I don't know if you remember that, right? But yeah, like Jason Eight, Nine, right. Ten, uh, Freddy Krueger. You know, they ran those franchises to the ground. Michael Myers, and there was just nothing. There's no horror movies until uh, '96 when uh, Scream came out, and they kind of went a different way. They went uh, meta and started talking about the rules of a horror movie, how to survive, and it was really cool. It was really refreshing, um, and that was you know how horror got kind of an upswing there uh, for a few years. Um, but, and again, horror ran, or not horror, but Hollywood ran it to the ground again because you had just a bunch of cheap uh, knockoff movies. I, I know what you did last summer, House of Wax, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so right now we're in the upswing. I hope it stays that way. Uh, a lot of cool horror movies coming up. Uh, Annabelle, Annabelle 2. Uh, I'm sure they'll get Conjuring 3 going. Uh, so yeah, definitely uh, pretty cool. Yeah, I think now, especially with Bloomhouse Productions, they, they found a formula where they can make these horror movies by spending very little money. You know, like their movies usually have a, a two or three main characters and it takes place at a house. Right. And all they do is use creative uh, camera angles and visual effects to, to make a, a film that's scary and costs almost little to nothing. I mean, compared to a Hollywood budget. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's the cool part is you have, you know, when you have no money, it forces you to become creative. Um, I mean, you look at the purge movies, right? The first one was in one house. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think all the money went to Ethan Hawke, probably. Uh, but it was great, and that whole franchise spawned out of it. They had uh, Perch two and three, and now they're uh, working on a fourth one. Um, and yeah, they, they, you know, I don't even know if they make if they uh, cross the ten million dollar mark, but when they pull in eighty, ninety, a hundred million every time. That's all profit, and they're really good. They're good movies. Yeah, so it sounds like you definitely watch a lot more horror movies than I do. Like, yeah, I watched a few in the past, and. You know, like like I said, some of them turned out very cheesy towards the end, um, but there were some good ones. So, um, are there any movies that you recommend that you know someone like me uh, can go check out? Yeah, well, I mean, uh, I'll give you my uh, my top ten. These are my these are my favorites. These are if if you're just getting into horror movies, or um, these are like the must watch. You know, what I mean, you know, don't you can't miss these. Uh, so my all time favorite, number one is Halloween, uh, Michael Myers, um, uh, everything about that movie. It's a perfect movie. It's a, it's just a perfect horror movie. Uh, the, everything from, from the acting, you know, Jamie Lee Curtis and, um, uh, you know, with a bunch of kids, the high school kids, they're not annoying, which is really good. Um, uh, but the atmosphere of the movie, the theme that was, uh, the music is classic, right? You play the Halloween theme song, and anyone knows it. Um, but the best part of the movie is it came out so long ago, and it's still freaking scary. Like you can you can play it today, and you're gonna freak people out. Um, which is you know, which is a testament to John Carpenter's uh, direction. He, there's very little blood. There's really not that much gore. He, Michael Myers doesn't kill that many people, but he freaks. I mean, the tension in that movie when you're watching it is 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 a uh, is incredible like it it'll freak anyone out who who you know especially someone who's not used to watching horror movies you know it's those well you know this halloween movie came in the 70s jamie lee curtis is in it and you're gonna they're gonna get freaked out and then michael myers is like the iconic slasher you know er- everything after him he wasn't the first one um you can say uh leatherface in the texas chainsaw massacre or the killer in black christmas or the first uh, slasher slasher characters but he he perfected it everything after him was you know we let's make michael myers um you know everyone from jason right i mean that's just a the cheap knockoff guy so uh yeah halloween that's my number one uh number two is uh silence of the lambs um and although i know a lot of people, you know, don't don't consider it a horror movie since it won all the Oscars, and I think they marketed it as like a psychological terror or something. That's a freaking horror movie, all right. It's a detectives going after a serial killer who likes to kill people, wear their skin, and they're being held by a cannibal. That's I don't know if that's horror. But if that's not horror, I don't know what it is. Yeah. Um, but I mean, that movie is. I mean, it it it, it swept the Oscars for a reason, right? Hannibal Lecter is one of the greatest villains of all time in cinematic history he's so great they made you know three other movies 
uh, just because of him. And then uh, the TV show uh, recently, which was great too. Um, and he's and what people don't realize is when they watch that movie, he's in the movie for for 15 minutes total. Um, that's how strong of a character he is. And it, what I think what also makes that movie real scary is how grounded it is. Like, dude, like this stuff is based off of real events, you know, not real events, but real people that lived. Uh, Ed Gein is uh, a serial killer that you know from the 50s or 60s who would dug up he, he only killed a couple of people but he would dig up their skins and wear them like that's real stuff this stuff really happens um so great movie uh jody foster is amazing um you know hannibal lecter it's it's just this is classic so science of is my number two uh number three uh, another john carpenter is uh the thing um What's great about this movie is that that's another one that was made in the early 80s and the effects still hold up today. They use all practical effects. Obviously, there's no CGI back then, but the creature, the creatures in that movie, they're still scary to this day. You watch it now and it'll freak you, just freak you out. And, Kurt, you know, Kurt Russell's in it. He's great. Uh, the, the biggest strength of that movie is um, the tension. It's the ultimate cat and mouse game. Uh, with the creature that, you know, who can take different forms. So you didn't know, you didn't know who, who was who, you know, is this, was this a human or was it an alien? You just didn't know. Uh, a lot of movies have, you know, have tried to copy that formula recently or not even recently, just ever since that movie where you don't know who, who you don't know who's on your side, who to trust. A uh, sense of paranoia and dread and fear with all the characters. Um, and another thing too is the characters in that movie, all memorable characters. They the whole cast did a great job. Um, and it was unbelievable, believable characters. Some guys are just freak out, and they're you know they just so scared. They, they don't know what to do. Um, then you have Kurt Russell, who's just the man. He's just I'll take care of it. Um, but yeah, another great movie. The, again, the score by John Carpenter. That one's classic. Actually, no, that wasn't by John Carpenter. It was by by John Carpenter. That was Enrico Maconi, and it was amazing. Uh, so number three is the thing. Number four, Jaws. Um, classic movie again. Uh, you know the, the Spielberg did a great thing with that movie where he he really let you scare yourself. Uh, the shark, the robotic shark, didn't work when they were making that movie. Uh, so they try to show it as minimal as possible. Cause it's just broken and it looked, and even when it did, you did see it, you can tell it was a fake shark. Right. Um, so you scared yourself the whole time, you know? Um, and also again, the, the score, the atmosphere, I mean, when you hear that song, you know, oh, that's Jaws. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And all they did was just show a fin, right? Just yeah. Swimming in the water. And a fin. And then boom. The and then boom, uh, the swimmer's gone and that's it. And you, you fill in the blanks yourself. You start imagining, damn, the shark got her and ate her, ripped her apart. You know, you, you freaked yourself out. Um, doing that classic, one of Spielberg's best, uh, his first big budget movie, and um, he crushed it. That's that's classic. So, um, then that 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 type of movie leads into my number five, which is Alien. Again, another movie where less is more. Um, they didn't really, you know, they didn't show you the alien. You know, half the time it was, you know, they're in dark quarters, you know, everything was dark. You couldn't see anything. It was hiding. It was right there the whole time. You didn't know it. And another, another, you know, cat and mouse game with something you can't, you don't know. You can't, you don't know it. You don't know where it's at. And then, and of course, uh, those movie, that movie introduced Ellen Ripley, probably one of the greatest uh, heroines of the Eddie film franchise. Uh, Sigourney Weaver just actually owned, actually, absolutely owned it. Um, so it was something that's lacking in these, even in this new one in Alien Covenant was the fear of the unknown in that movie. The the creature was there, but where, where was it? You didn't know. And what what did it do when it captured you? You didn't know. They didn't show it. It was just, just snatched you and you were gone. Mm -hmm. um, so that was number five. If you're going to see any of the Aliens movies and you haven't seen any, I, rec I would say, you know, Alien is, a, is the, that's the first one is a must. Um, and then watch Aliens by James Cameron. 
that was more that was scary as well. But it was more of an action movie, which was real smart on his part, so he wouldn't get compared to the first one. He was going to balls out with the Marines and the machine guns and fight a ton of aliens. So a different style of movie, but still great. Um, the Alien was number my number five. Uh, number six is uh, Exorcist. And I'll probably get some crap for this one for it being so low on the list. Whenever there's a top ten list anywhere, it's always Exorcist at the top. Maybe one or two. Um, and I agree, it's it's, it's scary as hell. Uh, it deals with some really, really, really crazy stuff with the possession. Um, you know, so the satanic stuff. Uh, the, the, the only issue with me and that's keeping it from being the top movie is uh, the effects really hurt it uh, they didn't age well uh i know you know like i know people younger people who've seen it and just they're not scared at all because the effects just look so bad um kind of not the movie's fault they you know working with what they had at the time uh but you know if it's not scary now it's just kind of hard for me to put it in the top five or, or top two i guess uh but still we're we're checking out um you know, if that stuff doesn't bother you, the effects don't bother you, you, you probably get, you might get scared. You'll probably get traumatized watching that movie. Um, super crazy, you know, just like, man, after you're done with that movie, you're just kind of like, I need to go to church because <laughs> I feel <laughs> it's, it's, it's going to get me. So, yeah, Exorcist is number six. Uh, my next one, uh, same thing. I'll probably get crap for it, and that's Psycho. Um, it should be, you know, it's always number one, number two, right? They're always Exorcist and Psycho. Uh, but this is my list, so my list is better. Um, Psycho, the same thing. It's a, it's it's a technically perfect movie. Uh, it's it it's by the book. This is when you're when you're making a horror movie. This is the movie you go off of. Uh, so why is it at seven? Problem is, it was made back, you know, back in the day. It's black and white, which not not knocking black and white. Um, but for nowadays, now at times you watch and. And that's kind of boring. Um, the kill, you know, the kills are, you know, if you're, unfortunately, you know, you want to see more of the kills and stuff. And even though the movie sets up, especially the shower, the shower scene kill where it sets it, sets it up and you're, you're freaking out because you know it's coming. Um, and you're, you know, get out of there, get out of there. Uh, when it happens, you're like, oh, it's, you know, it's not that great. Um, just because nowadays we become so desensitized to it, like, you don't see the knife, just you know, jack her up or anything like that, and uh, which is unfortunate because the movie is amazing. Uh, still, still one of the best ever. I mean, I still I, I watch it whenever it's on and whenever I have a chance to catch it. It's 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 class. Like this, you know, if you're in class and you're teaching how to make a movie, you make uh, Psycho. Uh, I bumped it down a little on my list because it, it is older, and unfortunately, some of this stuff hurts it. Um. So, but it's Psycho is still great. So that's my number seven. Number eight is uh, The Shining with Jack Nicholson. Mm -hmm. And if, if anyone's never seen The Shining, this movie will jack you up. It's, it's just you're watching like, what the hell am I watching? Like, it is just crazy. It's Jack Nicholson losing his mind. Um, seeing stuff, you know, just really, really crazy stuff. Uh, Stanley Kubrick who, if you've seen any of his other movies, it seemed like a crazy guy to begin with. And I just let, they let him loose in a horror movie. Um, one of the few times the, horror, the movie is better than the book. The book is, is by Stephen King. Uh, it's a good book. Uh, but the movie is just it's just so much better. Uh, it's scary. It's creepy. It'll, it's freaky. Yeah. You're going you're gonna, to, after watching that movie, you're just going to be like, this is, I need to go watch Finding Nemo. Because... I got I got to rinse my palate off here because that movie's so so out there. Uh, number nine, Night of the Living Dead. Uh, really, really important movie in that it created the modern zombie, the Romero zombie, taken from the director George Romero. Uh, the zombies before this one were always uh, based off of uh, voodoo. Um, people were you know being brainwashed and they were the living dead. Where they kind of became slaves, where you lost your soul, you lost your your uh, yourself, your will to live. You're just a, a mindless slave. This one actually made them dead. They were dead. They were dead bodies. and came up, and again, it's uh, 
it's an older movie, black and white. So if you don't, you know, if you can't watch stand watching black and white movies, it might uh, might hurt this one. Um, for me, it doesn't. Uh, the 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 way the way that Romero shoots it, it's it's scary as hell. Um, there's people trapped in a house with this horde of zombies coming in. And, you know, a lot of people might say, oh, I'm tired of the zombies on seeing the zombie genre with Walking Dead everywhere. Zombies are everywhere. But this was the, the first one. This is what started it. Uh, so if you're a big zombie fan, this is this is the one to check out. And then uh, my number 10 is uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the original. Um, like I said, kind of, kind of a, a precursor of the slasher. One of the first slasher movies was a slasher character in Leatherface. Um, interesting to note about this movie was that it was banned from uh, being played back in the day in a, in a lot of different states and countries for its gore. Uh, when you actually watch the movie, there's there's no blood. Like there's really there there really isn't. Uh, it was just the way that Toby Hooper shot everything. Um, with, you know, again with being such low budget, that his camera angles and the sense of fear from the from the actors and the pain that they conveyed. You thought, oh, this movie's gory, super gory, and, and this really isn't. So, um, it's a classic, um, another classic movie that I, I say definitely check out. Check out the first one. Don't check out any of the sequels. Uh, they get really, really bad, really cartoony. Um, there was a remake in 2003 with uh, Jessica Biel. The, it's okay. Um, they kind of reboot the whole the whole franchise and they change the name of the characters and kind of modernize it a little bit. And I guess if you want if you really want to check it out, go for it. Not the greatest movie. It it had its sequel itself or a prequel called New Beginning. Don't worry about that one. It's it's just trash. So the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Uh, check that one out. So that's my top ten. Um, I have a few that are that are pretty close. Uh, I would call them honorable mentions. Uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. Uh, overall, not a great movie. Um, however, Freddy Krueger really changed the game when it came to slasher, the killer, the villain. Uh, all the other guys were trying to copy Michael Myers. Were they were silent, foreboding killers. Um, you couldn't get away, and they would just stalk you all slow and stuff. Um, where Freddy had a real personality. He was talking junk. He was, you know, cracking wise the whole time. And you, you you really got a sense that man, this guy's crazy. Um, and also the kills, the way they killed, uh, since everything took in the dream world, you had every, the whole movie had a surreal feel to it. Um, you know, the classic kill with Johnny Depp lying on the bed and he gets pulled in and the pool of blood just shoots up to the ceiling. Um, that's great stuff. Great stuff. Uh, you, we haven't seen, when that movie came out, nothing had been seen like that before. I kind of knock it down a little because overall, it's really not that great of a movie. Acting's, you know, other than Freddy Krueger himself, it's not great. Uh, some of the kills come off kind of cheesy. Again, not its fault from because uh, coming from uh, its time with their work with. Uh, but Nightmare on Elm Street, uh, Jurassic Park is another one. Um, you know, people think you know Jurassic Park is not a horror movie. Uh, yeah, it kind of is. Um, you switch those dinosaurs out and you put in aliens, you know, or trolls. It's a horror movie. Um, and watching that movie, there's there's a, some really legitimate scares in that movie that uh, um, I remember getting freaked out in the theater um, as a kid. So I always keep Jurassic Park close on my, uh, on my horror movie list. And also the, the old universal horror movies, I always keep them. Um, I always tell people they need to check out uh, Frankenstein, Bride of Frankenstein, uh, King Kong, Wolfman. Uh, again, because they're, they're, because they are so old and some of you know, the effects, um, People might just say, oh, it just looks, that looks so creepy. Uh, not creepy, but real cheap. Uh, they're still per technically perfect movies. Um, that's how you learn how to make a horror movie. You watch these movies. And a lot of what they did with the, the, the effects they had at the time, they were able to hide it with super moody lighting, really creepy stuff, sounds, camera work. It's just great, great stuff. So all the, those movies, uh, check them out as well. Uh, but yeah, those are my my top ten all time favorite horror movies. Yeah, I remember watching Nightmare on Elm Street when I was a kid, um, and I was I couldn't sleep for days because of Freddy Krueger. Yeah, yeah, Freddy Krueger is great. Yeah. He's he's yeah, awesome. Yeah, the 
He had the glove with the claws on it, like Wolverine. Yeah. His, he had boils on his face, and he had that sweater, that swipe, striped sweater. Yeah, yeah. And then you're yeah. like, how do you fight this guy? He's not real, right? You can't fight him. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if I can watch it now. If I watch it now, I'll probably <laughs> laugh at it. Yeah, it's stupid. yeah. When watching it as a kid, it was pretty good. <laughs> one movie that was on that was not on your list, and I want to know why. Um, it. How come that one is not in there? It the, the the movie it. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, it was, it was, um, it was a TV movie. I think it was released around 1990. It was a two-parter. Um, again, this, that one's kind of like in the Nightmare on Elm Street, um, realm in that the movie itself is not good. Um, it's more, everyone remembers Pennywise, the clown. Right. And Tim Curry did such a good job as that creature that it scared everyone. Oh, my brother was super freaked out by Pennywise. Um, but if you actually sit and watch the movie itself, there it's not good. Either 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 of them, the, both parts, they're they're just not good movies. The acting's just bad. It's it was a TV movie with a TV budget. Um, definitely not one of the times when the movie's better than the book. Uh, the book's amazing. It's a classic. Um, that might have hurt us too because I'd already I'd already read the book before I watched it, and I was like, this this is just this is crap. <laughs> Uh, but Pennywise, though, uh, if there was a, uh, a, in the final list of the best uh, horror creatures or killers, um, he would be on it. He would be on it for sure. I'm, I'm excited for the new one. Um, trailer looked great. I uh, really want to see what Bill Skarsgård is going to do with the Pennywise creature. It, it really looks super creepy. Um, and that will be another, it will be a two-part movie in the theaters where... Uh, the, the the in those in those movies or in that book the the kids fight Pennywise twice once when they're middle school about middle school age and then again when they're full on adults so the movie will represent that will be part one will be with the kids part two will be with the adults um, but the original TV movie not good okay that's pretty cool um, thanks for sharing that list yeah yeah no problem I think uh, we're done rambling rambling for the day uh, I don't know if you got anything else you want to throw out there. No, I think you uh, you did, you covered a lot and pretty good for a first first show. Yeah, not bad, not bad. Um, I think uh, you guys, uh, your listeners, uh, stay tuned for next week. We're gonna be covering the uh, NBA Finals, Cavs and Warriors. Uh, spoilers. I don't think anybody was surprised that will be surprised by that. Cleveland's up by twenty right now in the third quarter. Um, and we'll also be covering all things NBA. Draft is coming up. Lottery last week, so so stay tuned. Yeah, and also be sure to check out our Comic-Con how-to guide. Um, we have three videos up now, and we're going to continue posting up more. Um, but be sure to check out the, the video on, on sleep, um, how to manage your yeah, sleep. Yeah, super important, super important. Yeah. <laughs> be sure to check that one out. 